Okay, serious question. What if your 2D painting or drawing or art print could actually come to life in 3D space? So for example, it could whisper to somebody when they walk up to it, or it could bloom, or it could dance, or twerk, or you know, whatever you want to do. All of that is actually possible using augmented reality. I recently created a series of AR art prints called Flower Just, and I used Lens Studio to bring them to life in AR, and now I'm gonna show you how. Honestly, it's super easy, so no code, no stress, just art, but like, upgraded. Okay, before we dive in, I just wanna warn you that you're probably gonna hear me say image anchor, image marker, image tracker, they're actually all the same thing. Like, real talk, AR is such a new industry that we really haven't decided on terminology yet and everybody has their own little flair on it. So I will use those terms interchangeably. Next up, let's talk about what makes a good image marker. So the image marker is gonna be the 2D image that is going to anchor your AR. So this is the image that's gonna be actually hanging on the physical wall. There are specific types of images that actually work really well as image anchors. So here are some things to shoot for when you're making one. Make sure that it's really high contrast and actually uses unique, distinctive details. Try to avoid rotational symmetry. Avoid repeating patterns, grids or polka dots or something like that. Think of it really as like a quadrant map. You're communicating to the computer where the various elements need to be based on the top, bottom, left, and right of your particular image. You're giving it a map. Okay, so here's a really quick overview of the process. First up, I sketched the basic compositions in Procreate on my iPad. The general idea was that I wanted to create a piece uh, that was a playful exploration of plant communication, which is like a real thing. And stylistically, I was going for kind of like futuristic boho, but like better. I then brought those sketches uh, into Gravity Sketch so that I could actually use them as reference material in VR uh, where I sculpted them. I then exported those sculpts and brought them into Blender where I was able to really polish the 3D models um, and clean up the polygons, etc. Later, I added an armature and animation to actually bring the flowers to life. And I also created some low poly butterflies and added some animation to them as well. After I'd made all the assets, I brought everything into Lens Studio 5 and I applied materials and particles and some post effects like chromatic aberration to really polish it off. Okay, now let's get started. So launch Lens Studio 5, and this is gonna be the first thing that you see. It's gonna offer you an option to either select Snapchat or Spectacles. We're gonna do Snapchat for now, and we're going to hit default. And this is the basic gist of a default project. We have our scene hierarchy over here, where you have all of your 2D and 3D objects and lighting and your camera object. You have your asset browser where you're able to import things and drag them into the scene hierarchy. You also have your scene, which is gonna be where you actually position everything. You have your logger, which is gonna tell you if there's any sort of errors or any sort of important information you might need. And then you have your inspector, which is tiny at the moment. Let me make that bigger. And when you select things, it actually gives you more information about those particular objects and you can actually set settings etc really important panel and there's also the preview panel which is going to let you actually test your particular project now let's go ahead and also talk about previewing this and testing it in order to test it you are going to need to test it on snapchat which means that you're going to have to have a snapchat account and it also means that you're going to have to pair your lens studio installation with your snapchat account so to do that in the upper right hand corner you're going to see where it says preview lens click on that and it's going to give you this snap code. You scan this code with Snapchat, like when you're in the Snapchat camera, and it's going to automatically pair to your Lens Studio installation. Now that we are all paired up and ready to go in Lens Studio, let's actually start building. So the first thing that you're going to do is actually create an image marker, and you can add that to your scene hierarchy by going up to the plus button in the upper left hand corner. And then I would just type in image into the search box. And there you go. You've got image marker right here under tracking. We'll select that. 
it's automatically going to ask you for whatever your image marker is or image target and that's going to be whatever your 2d drawing painting art print etc is so i'm going to select mine that's automatically going to set it up in the scene which you can see here now that we have our image target actually set up i want to be able to preview uh, the 3D objects on top of the actual image. So to do this, I'll go over to the preview panel and I'm gonna customize it with my own image. I click on idle right here, go down to the bottom where it says plus from files or add from files. And I already have an image that I've created um, to use as a mockup. So we'll select that. Okay, great. Now we have both the image marker set up and we have a, a way to test it essentially. Um, within Lens Studio. So the next step is to actually import your 3D objects. And it's pretty easy. I just created a GLB file, which I exported from Blender with the baked in animation from the armature. And to import, it's really simple. You just drag and drop. And I'm gonna drag and drop it right on top of that image tracking object. I'm not gonna change anything. These are the settings that I used. Hit accept. It's gonna go ahead and import it for you. And you can tell that it's ginormous because I didn't set my scale uh, quite in the right way. So let's go ahead and change this to like 7.0, 7.2. Okay, so good enough. All right. The next step in the process is to actually create all of your materials and add your particles and your post-processing and all the little zhuzhi refinement that you want. And we're not going to cover that in this video, but we will in subsequent videos. Okay, so we fast forwarded a little bit in the development cycle. I now have my materials applied to all of my objects and I've added some butterfly animation and some post-processing and a little bit of like visual zhuzhing. Um, and it's ready for publish. It's really that simple. So if I really wanted to test this first, I would actually hit um, preview lens and it's gonna automatically send it to the Snapchat on my phone where I can then test it with a physical print. And once I have actually assessed that, yes, this looks exactly like I want it to, I'm happy with the build and I'm ready to publish, then you just go up to project settings, you name it, whatever you wanna name it, um, I would select mobile and web for this particular thing. And then you add an icon and you add a little preview of your particular lens and you hit publish. To access your dashboard, an easy way to do it is just to click on the account icon in the upper right hand corner of Lens Studio, navigate to the lens that you have just published. And once you drill down, you're actually gonna be able to see here where it says enable web AR lens URL under the hosted web AR section. Just Click that on and it's gonna automatically give you a URL, which you can then send to people so that they can actually try your experience. And um, yeah, WebAR is uh, really that easy. If you're interested in my Flower Jest art series, it is now available on my, my new store that I'm launching. And the first 25 people um, that purchase one are actually gonna get a free template for image markers and Lens Studio, just to make building uh, that much faster. Also, if you really want to go deep, like the deep dive of my animation and export process and print prep tips and all that sort of stuff, I will be publishing in-depth tutorials on my Substack. I really hope that this encouraged you to try augmented reality. It's not as hard as you think. With WebAR, your audience really doesn't have to download anything additional to access your art. And I love that part. Hopefully this has been helpful to you. If so, please, you know, Hulk smash the like and subscribe button. I'm tired, it's, it's hot. My brain is melting. Anyway, it's great to see you here. I hope, I hope you have enjoyed this and can, uh, yeah, carry away some helpful tidbits. And uh, until then, if you make anything with this, I'd really love to see it. So post it in the comments and uh, yeah, happy making.